Hi guys and welcome. It has been a while on this one, as said, and excuse the shockingly bad footage, but uh, I'm in my kitchen, the light's not great, and I'm actually over in the dock, half of the kitchen, um, and here is, uh, I'm just shining a bit of a light on there to give you a better view, is the, um, well, the, the, the shell of my, of the espresso machine sitting there. Um, on the kitchen floor and over here are other bits and over there are other bits excuse the mess so yes everything's kind of in bits um, I started with the intention of just doing a couple of little bits and doing it bit by bit but uh, I sort of remove one bit and then another and then another and, and it just kind of spiraled from there so uh, I thought what the hell I'll go for the whole lot so I'm, st I'm slowly stripping all this down I've gotten to a point where I'm able to get most of the horrible gunge out of the shell and clean it up. Uh, thankfully, I'm not going to have to take all the wiring out, which I thought I was, so that's good. I'll be able to clean uh, the wires that I need to in situ, but that's good because I know that the wiring does work now. Um, there were a couple of little problems initially, uh, but that, that means I don't have to fiddle with it after putting it back together and fiddle with the routing and stuff, so that's good. Um, I've just removed the the boiler and the boiler stand and uh, we'll look at all those bits in a moment and I've uh, using a scraper tool down there I'm uh, cleaning all the gunge off and then vacuuming the worst of it up before I clean all the all the base in the frame and start putting bits back together and then the drain tubes are going to get a good clean and flush out and then Moving on from there, we have got the boiler, uh, looking shinier than it was, that's, that's the colour that it came out, um, kind of grungy, as you can see, and, um, and I've been slowly attacking that with a Scotch-Brite pad and some bits of Brasso, as you can see, there and there. Uh, because this is visually the biggest thing in there when you take the lid off, when you actually look inside, and the lid is designed with a grid at the top so it's passive heating, so that you can stack your cups on the top and they will keep warm. Um, but because you can lift the lid off, the first thing that you see is this huge boiler here. So I want that to be visually sort of, uh, it will discolour with heat and use anyway. But, you know, um, it's not strictly speaking necessary for it to look shiny, but I'm going to give it a polish anyway. So um, I have, you can see I've given the uh, that pipe a bit of a polish. I'm not going to undo that one. There's no need to do so. I'm going to um, scotch bright the whole thing. And then I need to get a couple, uh, some caps for these for that, that and that, upend it, take the element out which is on the other side which then gives me a nice big hole I'm going to fill that with citric acid solution and descale it, give it a good swish around, empty it out. There's not any lime scale as such but there is some kind of old scale in there, uh, some little bits you can still see in the sink. So I just want to make sure that's had a really good swish out and everything's loosened up and onto the sink as you can see in there, we've got various other bits. Um, the stand for the boiler and the drain tray, drip tray. The uh, Over by the drain, you can see the hot water dispenser tap. The other one is by the espresso machine, the steam dispenser tap. They're the same construction. Here's the group head, this bit down here. That's two and a half kilos that group head alone. The thing is so heavy, it's incredible. Uh, the hot water dispenser, the steam wand, and some of the copper pipe work, which uh, again, we'll just get a, a bit of a clean up with a um, scotch bright pad. You can actually see there, I've already scotch brighted one of them and you can see the others in comparison. And then they will be thrown into a tub with some descalers. I've had um, a bunch of the parts in the citric acid descaler and uh, just to kind of give you an idea um, and show you how uh, the parts will come out. You see the you've got the copper pipe and the brass nuts and you'll see how it gets rid of um, 
a lot of the gunge because you, you can see the difference on that one because that one was actually stuck up out of the tin it wouldn't actually fit in because it didn't have one big enough to submerge the entire thing so if you compare that one to one that's been soaking you can see the difference there um, citric acid descale up brilliant for cleaning up these parts the this is the steam tap which is is disassembled uh, both of which have been stripped and the rubber seals and, and bits taken out and the, uh, the remnants put in the citric acid descaler. I'm just going to go through the reassembly. Uh, this actually does need a new rubber seal, this, this rubber cup seal. You can possibly see there it's got a bit of the lip broken and it's actually become quite brittle. I don't have a spare one just yet. Um, of, uh, of the spare bits I got, I, it didn't actually occur to get rebuild kits for the taps. The other one is okay and there's still some flexibility in that rubber cup. That one obviously is subject to much higher temperatures being the steam one so I, I do need a replacement set for that but I'm just going to assemble this as is for the moment and uh, show you how that goes together. So first of all we take this section which fits here. This, um, sorry, uh, let me just get this the right way around. There we go. This is what this fits in the machine like that. The steam one comes down there, the pipe from the boiler goes into there, and then this section goes into here. This is where the handle goes. And I'm just going to show you how this goes together. So you take this section first of all, and then you've got a collar here, um, which has a little step. The stepped part goes to the bottom, like so. That just simply pushes in. And then you have a washer. This washer is important because the spring down here bears onto this washer. And so that washer fits in there like so. You then take this threaded section that feeds in from the opposite side through there. At which point you can start the thread by turning that and wind this back. And you need to wind this back fully for initial fitting onto here. Now, make sure that this cup and, uh, and washer is seated and then the spring is fitted onto that and you can see that it bears down onto there and that's why that's important. We then have this cap and inside of that is a Teflon seal which the other side of the spring seats onto. Again this one's a bit worn and really needs replacing but it will do for now. That then screws onto there, and this doesn't have to actually be that tight. Just a little over hand tight is adequate for this. And this um, is operated by the handle, turning this in and out. On the top of this is a tiny, tiny nut, which you unscrew. And then the cup washer sits onto there and sits inside. It's actually a hollow groove. And the little nut then fastens down onto this threaded portion. Doesn't need to be crazy tight. I'm just going to use a pair of pliers to grip that and nip it up, holding the plunger here, as you can see. So just grip it a couple of flats. Obviously you can use a spanner, a wrench, what have you, um, but it's just, just a case of of nipping it up it doesn't doesn't need to be cranked down tight and that's that bit there that bit will actually swivel it's intended it's meant to do that and then this will screw in and out to open and close the steam the next step is this side here now I'm not going to fit this completely just now because this has to be removed for this to be bolted to its its mounting plate um, because you have to take this big nut off, feed it through and secure this large nut onto the mounting plate. What you then do is fasten this bit in here. There's a copper washer here incidentally, if I can, there we go, copper washer there. That needs to be fitted in place. That's a compression washer and make sure that that seals and that's cranked down good and tight. And as I said, this bit secures it to its mounting plate. So that's cranked down nice and tight, that's cranked down nice and tight. This bit, as I say, just a little over hand tight is adequate for that bit. At that point, you've got 
the steam one which fixes onto here. This steam wand also has a spring inside it and a Teflon washer up here which also needs replacing as you can see. It comes down through the hole in the in the plate where the group head sits and bends uh, out but being on a, a ball, a swivel ball with a spring that allows it to be tilted any which way and then the pipe from the boiler um, fits onto the back of there and that's how they're assembled. A little bit of an unexpected snag coming along uh, working on the group head. Uh, first of all, I had a, a moment of extreme annoyance with myself and you can see if you look at the um, the hole, the mounting hole that's nearest that wrench there on, on the workmate, you can see it's a little bit out of round, it's, it's a bit mangled. And what happened was, while I was holding this and cleaning it and um, and trying to uh, to clean around inside here. I fumbled it, dropped it, and it hit the floor. Now this is nearly two and a half pounds in weight on its own. It's a heavy, heavy lump of brass that's plated. And, um, and it hit the floor, and the floor is covered in lino. And unfortunately, the lino is covering a concrete floor, and concrete is not particularly flexible, as you know. And I picked it up at first thinking, ah, oh, well, you know, and I, I was annoyed because I've already damaged the lino, which is annoying enough. Um, and then I looked around it, couldn't see anything obvious at first, and then I noticed that I'd bashed that corner in right there, which really, really annoyed me. Um, after I'd sort of left it alone for a bit and, uh, and calmed down, I had a good look at it and noticed that it seemed to be brass. I wasn't sure at first, but it's, uh, it's brass and it's plated. So using a, um, an old stake from uh, a broken stake from my staking set, watchmaker staking set, I basically managed to punch the top back into a roundish kind of shape and then dug out my tap and die set, uh, which is down there on the floor. It's not a great set, but it's good enough to do the job. And of course, tapping into brass, it's relatively soft. And managed to chase that thread back through and recover it enough for it to be usable because I wanted, even though three would have held it, I did want all four working because it's a heavy, heavy group head. So there was that, which was slightly annoying. And then the other thing, which was a nuisance, was the dispersal plate, which fits on there. And then you've got the shower plate, which fits on there, like so. And this particular group head, I could not find anywhere on the internet. I googled the pants off this thing last night. And there's E61 group heads, and there's a there's another group head that Wager uh, uses. Which is kind of like this, but not quite. And the, the shower screen was easy enough. Unscrewed the screw in the centre and lever that off, that came off. This was filthy underneath. And um, it's obviously all been cleaned and it's been sat in descaler. And I've cleaned all around inside there. Now this, I've looked at it and it, it didn't look like it levered off. I thought there's only two possible ways this could be connected. One is it's screwed on and these two holes here are for a wrench. Of some description. Now this is an adjustable angle grinder wrench, um, a wrench of some description, uh, or it's held on by the screw in the centre and it's just stuck on. So obviously I tried some gentle levering that was going nowhere, tried some um, persuasion with uh, needle nose pliers with, uh, with this wrench and all sorts of things. I ended up having to clamp the thing in here and apply heat to this with a hot air paint stripper heat gun and apply quite a bit of heat to this and um, and then try and every so often to sort of to break that seal and open it which finally it did but it was a real real struggle a real wrestle now that actually looks pretty clean and that's because i've cleaned it i've actually i've rinsed all this off i've given that a scrubbing down with um, some scotch bright pad like i have with the the group seal in there because it's going to have new new group seal and then but this color here that you see around the dispersal holes that's what it was like inside that's that's basically old bits of um scummy dried um, coffee residue oils and things which would 
make things taste rank and, and sour and disgusting. And I honestly don't think this thing has ever had a reasonable service in its entire lifetime. Now, this machine is, is dated 2011. And you can see how that screw's on there. And because it had been sat there and heat cycled so many times all those years in a commercial uh, cafe environment and never been sort of truly uh, properly serviced. I think at most it's maybe had the odd back flush and a new shower screen every once in a while. Um, and it's certainly in the last three years not had any um, particularly nice treatment. That, this shower screen was absolutely gunged up solid in all these holes. There were just a handful of these holes that were free. Um, I'm amazed that it cleaned, in fact. And this, um, that O-ring seal in there is hardened. I need to get a new O-ring seal for that. Um, yeah, so that's that's next to be cleaned up and, uh, and make sure that all these holes are free. And then I'm going to give this another good clean and then I can actually reassemble this uh, once I've gotten a new O-ring seal and uh, a new group gasket. Um, inside there, this kind of scale, but it's it's like a um, baked on sort of uh, residue scale, not not lime scale. So that's going to get a clean out and uh, as uh, and as short soak in citric acid anyway. But that's going to be the next thing is is the boiler, and then I'm going to continue cleaning the outside, give it a polish, and then I can start reassembling the whole thing. Here's most of the detritus from the boiler. And I suspect that this is probably about eight years worth um, because honestly, looking at the state of this machine, I don't think it's ever had any sympathetic uh, maintenance other than the absolutely necessary stuff in the past. So that's actually not that bad. You can see some verdigris there, which obviously is uh, corrosion from the copper, but it's pretty solid and sound. And uh, that's kind of just like flaky scale. And here with the assistance of the light, you can kind of see, there's the heat exchanger tube, as you can see there, and that there, let me just focus on that, if I can, okay, it's not allowing me to, but the, the larger tube there is for the um, hot water, and that the um, thinner tube next to it is the temperature level sensor. You can see where the level has typically been on the heat exchanger tube there, which is just over halfway. Um, and essentially it's about sort of up here kind of thing. So it's a, a little bit over halfway of the boiler capacity. Um, so now it's a case of get the boiler back together and start reassembling the machine.
there we go that's just clicked off just at the top of that gauge um that gauge if you watch the previous videos um i'm not a hundred percent confident that that gauge is accurate because i have actually taken it apart and rebuilt it as best i'm able um and obviously i've got nothing to calibrate it against so it's entirely possible it's off a little bit but i think it's i think it's yeah okay-ish so we have got a working group head which is cool and so far it's not looking like there's any leaks so I'm happy enough with that I need to double check the plug because I've wired this in via a it's a big block connector as you can see <coughs> to allow me to use a um, pre-wired plug and that's a, a heavy duty one which was from a um, a discarded commercial um, water boiler, uh, water urn, which was thrown away. Uh, so I took the cable off because it's good, thick, heavy duty cable, which is obviously intended for big heating elements. Um, so I'm just uh, going to keep an eye on that for a moment, run off some hot water and see how everything's going. Um, I just want to try that extraction again and check the gauge while I'm at it. Nice. Yeah. Well, it's popping up, we're getting our reading. Quick thing to note is I am still, as per the original test videos, currently siphoning from um, empty milk jugs uh, with water in, obviously, um, because I've just drained off quite a bit of water there to test the refill and reheat, and that's now uh, reheating nicely. Um, I've set up the drain temporarily with an old bit of offcut of washing machine hose because that's all I had to hand and I um, I am currently now waiting on plumbing fixtures for an adapter for that pipe to my uh, plumbing pipe work near the sink because this is next to the sink handily and a proper drain hose of the correct diameter uh, which will fit onto there and I can either plumb that into the waste pipe or just uh, feed it into this little thing. I don't know what I'm going to do 100% just yet, I'm not sure. But um, as you can see that it does work, I'll just... Whoop. So we've got the, the little drain pot here which I will sort of use a smaller jug. I will pour water into and you can see that's draining away nicely and you can see that's nice nice hot water out of there as well so uh, so far I am rather pleased as uh, you can imagine uh, that's just where I've splashed over there but so far um, fingers crossed I can't see any drips or anything that look unpleasant. So, righty, good stuff. Uh, where does that leave us? I think that I think we'll uh, wrap that up for this video. It's uh, it's all together. It's it's been filled. It has been heated up. I've let that cycle a few times. I've drained off some water. I've um, I've let off some steam. Ha <laughs> ha. Uh, I let off some steam from the steam wand. I've uh, expressed a few shots through the group head and everything so far is looking okay. Uh, I've just switched it off now, but, um, but I think we'll call, we'll call it that for, uh, we'll, we'll call that it for this video. 
And what's next is I have got some proper drain hose ordered and come in and a group new group head gaskets and new gaskets for the water and steam taps uh, because the old ones are a bit rubbishy as you saw earlier um so i'm going to strip those and rebuild those those are easy to do with everything in place all i need to do is remove the the fr this front panel and, and those bits and that's that's easy enough to do and i can get access to those take them out replace the bits put them back in obviously when it's all cooled down and um once that's done it's just then the cosmetics and that's what i'm going to be starting to do next while i wait for the parts coming is cleaning up the the panels that make it look pretty that cover all the all the gubbins and wiring and boiler and everything up and i'm going to give them all a good clean put it all back together the facing panel i've got here cleaned and ready to go back on and the drip tray likewise so it's just the the top cover the sides and everything but uh, i suspect this video is going to be far too long as is so i'm going to call it done for this one and uh, and then in the next one it's going to be refitting the the panels that make it all look nice so um there we go the espresso train is getting so close i can almost taste it thank you for watching hope you enjoyed this update and we'll see you in the next video